So yesterday at Apple's Unleashed event, we saw the introduction of two new Apple Silicon chips and the follow-up to last year's M1 chip. Apple has kept the M1 name, but beefed up performance considerably to the point where now we have to call it the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. So what's the difference? Which chip should you get with your new MacBook Pro? Well, hopefully I can help you with those questions. Before we talk about the chip's capabilities, it is important to clear up something that people have been asking, which is that both the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros can be configured with either the M1 Pro or the M1 Max chip. You'll just need to custom configure on Apple's website. Now with that said, the M1 Pro features up to 10 CPU cores with eight high performance and two energy efficient cores. In terms of graphics, the M1 Pro has up to a 16 core GPU, which is up to twice as powerful as last year's M1 chip. It has up to 200 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth using 33.7 billion transistors and supports up to 32 gigs of unified memory. The base 14 inch model comes with a lower spec M1 Pro with eight CPU core, so six high performance and two energy efficient, as well as a 14 core GPU. So its performance will come in at a bit lower than the M1 Pro on the base 16 inch model. So something to keep in mind there too. Now, as far as the M1 Max goes, that actually builds on the M1 Pro, and it all starts by doubling the memory interface, delivering up to 400 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, and supports up to 64 gigs of unified memory with 57 billion transistors. It has the same 10 core CPU, but up to a 32 core GPU, that's up to seven times faster, and is similar in performance to discrete graphics while using 70% less power. A 24 core GPU option is also available. So yeah, to sum it up, the M1 Pro has faster performance and is somehow more battery efficient than the M1 chip from last year, which was already pretty remarkable in both of those areas. It was very powerful and it was very energy efficient. I remember mentioning how I've never heard the fans kick on when using those machines and I still haven't. Then you can add the M1 Max, which is now two times better than that when it comes to graphics performance. Since these are pro machines, obviously these high-end chips and performance capabilities are best served for people who can really use it. Whether you dabble in 3D rendering, music or video production, graphic design, whatever the case may be, if you ever find your laptop not capable of handling the graphics or CPU intensive tasks, maybe your fans are kicking on way too much and your laptop is overheating, this new M1 Pro or M1 Max MacBook Pro should really eliminate most of those issues. Now, it's just a matter of deciding whether or not you really need the Max. And honestly, the answer is probably not. I mean, if you can swing it, and this is going to be your main machine for you know, the next few years, or you really just don't foresee yourself upgrading after this, you're just gonna stick with it as long as you can, and you really just wanna future-proof it as much as possible, then I suppose maxing it all out and getting the highest end options that you could would be the right move, assuming you need that extra graphics, uh, you know, capabilities and boost, because that's really where a lot of this stuff lies. There's far more power in the graphics department when it comes to the M1 Max. So let's take all of this into consideration for those who might be a video editor like myself. This is one of the easier things that I can kind of relate to. The M1 Pro includes dedicated acceleration for ProRes professional video codec, allowing playback of multiple streams of high quality 4K and 8K ProRes video while using very little power. Now couple that with a 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, and 16 to 32 gigs of memory, and that's pretty probably enough for most video editors out there. The M1 Max delivers up to two times faster video encoding than the M1 Pro, and it features two ProRes accelerators. With M1 Max, the new MacBook Pro can transcode ProRes video and compressor up to 10 times faster compared with the previous generation of 16 inch MacBook Pro models, which is pretty insane. And then you can potentially just max out the 32 core GPU and 64 gigs of RAM, which is only available if you upgrade to that max chip. And so it's really hard to say exactly without testing whether you need it or not, but the graphs and benchmarks shared at Apple's event yesterday tell us that the M1 Max is most likely going to be one of the most powerful laptops out on the market and with the M1 Pro just really not being that far behind. So if you're a professional user who does a lot of graphics intensive work, then yeah, the M1 Max might be the best option for you. After all, 
time is money. So if you can get your renders or other GPU heavy work done in half the time compared to the M1 Pro, then you might want to step up to that max. But for most other users, if everything I just said before isn't really that big of a deal and you don't need to beef up the GPU that much, then the M1 Pro should be sufficient. So really the main difference is here that you'll need to figure out is whether or not you need those extra 16 cores for GPU. And if 32 gigs of memory is not enough, well, 64 is your only other option that's only supported by the max chip. So that should help make your decision easier. Of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Which one are you planning on getting? Which one do you think you need? Please let me know down in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.